Welcome to People Love Process. When it comes to logo design, one size does not fit all. You have to create assets for specific types of use all the while ensuring you retain the continuity of the established brand aesthetic as well. Let me show you how I create logo design assets so they work knocked out of a dark, colored, or photographic background. So there's some times when you create a logo where it's very easy. So if we take a look at, uh, we have a vertical format here, a horizontal, and just the brand mark. It might be as simple as just taking this, copying it, Command C, Command F, bringing it down on a dark, or in this case, a, photo, a dark photographic background. And all we have to do is go ahead and go to the Pathfinder, where we put it here, and we go Unite like this. It's reverting to whatever color is on top, like that. And that doesn't even look bad with one of those brand colors, but it could be this easy uh, just to color these white, and you don't really have to do anything more. Uh, a good example of this in the real world is like the Nike swoosh. Uh, they can just throw that on any colored background and knock it out and it's going to work. So some logos are very easy, uh, but some logos are a little tricky. And those are the ones I want to go over how to approach those and how to make uh, more complex designs deduce down into simple one color motifs because it does make usage more flexible for your clients. So that's what we're going to uh, jump on next. So let's take a look at this logo I did for a business in Idaho. If I just make a copy of this and I move it over and we just color it white, it doesn't look bad, but what is supposed to be kind of dark, the pupil of his eye, is now white. So it's not perfect. It's not idealistic, especially the hat. Uh, the, the top hat should be dark, but it's white over here. Uh, and the highlights should be highlights, but they're often coming out as shadows. So this is where you need to approach different designs using different tactics to make sure they're going to work well. And that's what we're going to do here. So let's focus on this one. And I'm going to create what I'm calling a nesting shape. Now, that's kind of a pun since it's a bird character, uh, aristocratic uh, owl, if you will. Uh, but all I'm doing is I'm just using elliptical shapes to do this. And that's all I want to do here is I want to take one shape and uh, shape build with it. So if we take these two shapes here, I might go to Pathfinder and go minus front. I might take the, the other two shapes we have here and go ahead and go... Um, uh, unite and combine them together. You might get some artifacts as you do that. That's fine. Just go into isolation mode, delete what you don't want. I go into this graphic and grab the hat, make a copy of it, Command C, and then back out and then paste in place like that. It doesn't matter with the highlights being in the middle. We're going to kind of encompass all those. We'll just unite this I'll go ahead and sample this since we're going to do an outline here. And I'm going to go ahead and go offset. And we'll offset this, I believe it's 15, like that. That looks good. On this one, I might even go round just so you get a nice rounding like that. I think that's going to work. We can take the original shape, which is here in the middle. We can just get rid of that. We don't need it. Then I can take the top and the brim of the hat and unite those so we have the outline going around there. Now, this is where I'll take this shape. I'll clone it, Command-C, Command-F. Go to the Reflect tool, find a central anchor point, make sure Smart Guides is on, Command-U to toggle on and off Smart Guides, and we'll reflect that over like this. All we're doing is we're creating an encompassing shape around all of these. Let's turn on this because we have this nice little profile we created over here. So I'll go ahead and copy that. I'll select the anchor in the center, reflect that over like this. I'll just take the rectangle tool. I'm just going to lop off the part of this elliptical shape we don't need. We just want the rounded bottom here. And now I can select that bottom, both sides of this uh, profile sign shape we have 
and the offsets we did above, unite them all together. We'll click into isolation mode because we don't need this center shape. We can delete that. And this is how I create what I just refer to them as a nesting shape. It just happens to be an owl. So, <laughs> so there you go. So if I take this and copy it and paste behind this with this shape on top, I could select this shape and just go minus front. And notice it's going to revert to a group, turn it to a compound. And then if I just fill this with green, you know, we get that same look. But this is going to work because we can take this, color it white here. You can't see it. But on a dark background, this is what you end up getting. And that's how I would take a logo design like this and uh, kind of nest it within a shape. So it would work great on a colored photographic or dark background. Usually when I do this, I also put an outer glow on it. So if I... Uh, select this. You can see we have that turned off. I'm just going to turn that on because that really makes it pop really well, uh, adding a nice little subtle uh, uh, glow around it. Usually I pick a, the darkest color in the background and use in that case. Uh, so this is the way I handle this. We could even isolate the brand mark, which is just the head of the owl and top hat and do the same for that as well. So it's, it's not too hard. You just have to think what's going to communicate uh, the way you want it to. So in this case, I want the top hat to read dark with the highlights and I want the inner part of the eye to read dark. And this is going to work uh, really well for that. So along with all the other color assets that I deliver, I deliver versions like this as well. Let's take a look at another example. Uh, me and Savannah were tasked with doing some brand identity for, of all things, an online dating service for those who like hunting and fishing. So that's why this is a deer. This is one of the concepts we did. And again, you can't just simply take something. In this case, we'll copy it, bring it over on whatever background that would be dark and go ahead and color it white. This is unlike the previous one, isn't bad. But the part I don't like about it is I want the eyes to read dark, not light. And I want the nose to read dark, not light. And even though this isn't bad, I think it could be improved. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that and show you how I would approach this because, well, let's go back one step. I do think the antlers are fine as is. So I don't want to change that. We're going to keep that. And this is where you might have to look at your graphic and realize what parts work and what parts don't because it's not all or one. Uh, in this case, the antlers are going to work. So I'm going to turn this on and we keep the antlers as is, but the inner part is fine. And so I just use the copy of those shapes on the inner part and those will read white. All I have to do is just move this down and we'll just position this where we want it like this select this and unite them together. And now we have a graphic that's going to work really great on a dark or colorized background. Now this design direction, they ended up going with a different uh, design direction, which I totally love. Uh, but I like this one as well. And this is how I'd create all the various formats, whether it's vertical, horizontal, or in this case, just the brand mark itself and how it would work in a one color fashion on a dark or colorized background. Uh, let's take a look at a few more. Uh, here's one where it's a sports mascot. Now sports mascots tend to be pretty complex and have more than like one or two colors. This has shading and uh, uh, a lot of color in it. And how would you simplify this? Well, this is their primary graphic. It's a modular design. So we could we created other design formats that could be used on merchandise and stuff. But if I have to simplify this, um, how would I do that? Well, I'm going to show you how I do that. And this is where if you know you're creating this, then think ahead. Think eventually I'm going to have to simplify it and build it in such a way that it makes that easier. You don't want to have to go back and recreate stuff. So if you think about it up front, 
and uh, you do that kind of preparation, creatively speaking, it's going to make your life a lot easier. So if we just go here, I'm going to go ahead and ungroup this because there's details in here we don't need. Like all these shapes are just sitting on top. We can get rid of those. All these shapes, again, are sitting on top for shading. We can get rid of those. We have a shape here that's the white of the ear. You can see those are just sitting on top of that, so we can go ahead and get rid of those. Now, this shape we need, but this shape we don't because it's just sitting on top. So just get rid of the shapes you don't need. Here we have the nose. We need that. We need this. We'll select these two. We'll select the tongue. We'll select the eye shape, all of these, and we'll just go ahead and unite it. Now, at times where two areas kind of butt up right next to each other, if we unite them, you're going to see extra anchor shapes here after you unite. Just hit unite again usually takes care of that like this. Now, again, this will be a group, so you'll want to make sure this is a compound. This is now sitting on top of our blue shape. So all we have to do is select this, these shapes that we uh, united together, select the blue shape underneath. You can see it's just all stacked on top of one another. And then I'll just go minus front. We punch through that shape again. It's going to revert to a group, change it to a compound. And with this shape now that's blue, we'll select the gray outline and we'll go ahead and go minus front. Again, it'll revert to a group, change it to a compound. We'll now change this to white, and we have a great one-color version of this uh, mascot art that's going to work on a colored or dark background. Now, they might use it in advertising, so maybe it's a schedule for the football game or for the football uh, teams are going to be playing and they want to use a photograph and it would work great in that context. This is why you want to provide these because it makes usage for your client a whole lot easier. Uh, now, you might have a design or come up with a design that has a lot more colors than two or three. Uh, this one has five colors in it, which is a little unique in terms of logos for me. Most of them don't. So how would you uh, want to simplify this? Well, I wouldn't want to knock the shapes of this moon uh, through this background shape that's kind of outlining it. Because uh, one, I think every all these shapes on the interior were, would read as, as dark on a dark background. So I wouldn't want to do this. So I'm going to show you how I would simplify this one. I'd select it, go ahead and ungroup. So I have this one group. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to get rid of this outer shape. But before I do this, this distance I have um, here and going around the edge of the, of the sun shape, I want it. You can see how close it comes to the typography here. So I don't want to lose that distance here. If I just remove this, and get rid of it, it's going to be too far of a distance. So what I want to do first is I'll just go ahead and we have the same distance in this gap up here. So I'll just take this, slide it down until it snaps to where the other one was. And now this is touching. I wouldn't want that. So all I'm going to do is click into this, grab this shape, delete it, click out of this. This one, I can go ahead and just unite all these shapes. It'll use whatever colors technically on the top tier. That's fine. We're not going to leave it green. I would go into here. I would go ahead and ungroup it. This detail, I just delete. We don't need it. Uh, so we'd select all these elements like this. We can color it in this case. We'll just keep it the green color here. And I'll go Unite. Make sure I hit comp, uh, my F7 key to create a compound like that. And this is going to work great. So if I go ahead and select this now, I'll go ahead and copy it. We'll turn on this layer. And I'm going to paste it like that. And we'll go ahead and color it white. So that's how I'd simplify uh, this type of design into a one color format, they'd work great on a dark background. So let's take a look at another one. This one's a little different in that uh, we have a gradient in here to add a little dimension in uh, this brand exploration. And I want to 
kind of use that in the one color, but how you how would you do that? Well, we're going to zoom in on this one, and I have the shape here, and I'm kind of cheating because uh, we're just going to go to graphic styles. I pull this out here, and I'm going to click this, and all this is is a gradient, and that gradient goes from white 100% down to white that's 0% opacity. Uh, and I have it, if we select the gradient tool at that angle, just so it gives that nice hint of white. And now this will work on, once again, any uh, colored or dark or dark photographic background. And it still uses that nice kind of uh, form of gradient within the mark as well. So that's how I'd pull uh, something off. It's a little different because mostly I... I avoid gradients and logos, but on this one, it just worked. And so I didn't want to get rid of that in the one color format. And that's how um, I adjusted it to work in that context. Now, why do you want to do this? Why do you want to provide these kind of assets for your clients? Because it makes usage way more flexible. So here's a design that I did for a logistics company. And if you look at the vertical format here with the type and it's stacked in the horizontal format, how would you simplify this? Because one, you have a background shape here and you have this breaking out on the left and breaking out on the right. Well, how would you handle that? Well, this is how I handled it. I just did an offset of the shape of the horn so what in the color version is a white outline that just is consumed by the background. We don't use the shading in it. We're reducing it down to a one color and then I use it to create the outlines here. So it, it, it's just about looking at your design and thinking how you can simplify it with and retain the equity that you established in this direction. Now, once again, why would you want to do that? Because it makes usage easier. Not everything can work in full color. It's obviously uh, a lot more cost effective if they could print something in one color rather than full color and, and utilize their branding in that respect. This is a logistics company. They use containers. So printing their design in one color on a container is a lot more cost effective. Now you can see this was a different design direction they ended up going with. But the same principle applies in terms of applying it uh, to their vehicles. Uh, this is their container. Here's the vehicle. And by the way, this is what I convinced them to go with this direction. Um, I use um, an online site that I want to share with you called Yellow Images. Ad agencies use it to create photorealistic mock-ups like this but to show them to the clients before they have to do any manufacturing or production. And this helps to sell an idea so much. I love yellow images, super high quality. Uh, you just buy a layered PSD file and it tells you what layer to put your design on. You can size it, adjust it however you want, drop in whatever color you want, and you get a photographic uh, photo shoot quality mock-up that you can use with your clients. I've been using them for years now. Uh, they do a great job. And the best thing, they're very reasonable cost-wise. It costs about $15 for a PSD uh, template. So make sure to check them out. I think you'll uh, get a lot from using them. So remember, simply taking a black and white version of the logo and coloring it white won't always work when placed on a dark background. So take the time to create a customized version that will. If you enjoy this content or have a question you'd like uh, to ask me, just leave a comment below and I'll respond to it. If you like to access the exercise file for any movie on this channel, you can always find a link in the description below the video. Remember, members get bonus content and behind the scenes information. And if you simply subscribe, it also helps me continue to make content for this channel. So thank you for that support as well. Once again, thank you for watching People of Process. And as always, I hope this content helps you to improve your own creative process.